Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. Today we're going to talk about arithmetic sequences and series. Now that we have an understanding of sequences and series, we're ready to look at specific kinds of sequences. The first we'll consider is an arithmetic sequence, a sequence where we add a constant number each step. So we'll add some number and we keep adding the same number every time we go forward a term. Sequences of this form pop up all the time in real life and we often need to add up their terms. We'll explore the creation of a formula for arithmetic series that will allow us to quickly and easily add up those terms. Plus, by the end of this lesson, we'll be able to add all the numbers between 1 and 1,000 in less time than it takes to put on a pair of shoes. I think that's pretty cool. So we'll be able to do something really, really fast that seems like it would take a long time, just like that. All right, a sequence is arithmetic if the difference between any two consecutive terms is constant. So we can show that with the recursive relationship a n minus a n minus 1 equals d. So notice the nth term minus the n minus 1 terms, that is the term 1 before the nth term, equals d. So some term minus the term before it equals d. And d is just some constant number. We call d the common difference. Here are two examples of arithmetic sequences. They're arithmetic because every step in the sequence has the same change. So for example here, 1 to 4, 4 to 7, 7 to 10, 10 to 13, it's plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3. It's always the same amount that we change. It's always adding a constant number. Over here, 5 to 3, 3 to 1, 1 to negative 1, negative 1 to negative 3, it's minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. And that pattern would continue as well. So in this case, our common difference is negative 2. We're adding negative 2 each time, or we can think of it as subtracting by 2 each time. The important thing is that it's always the same. The difference can be positive, the difference can be negative, but it always has to be the same with each one. That's what makes it an arithmetic sequence. How can we find the nth term? The definition for an arithmetic sequence is based on a recursive relation. It's based on a n equals a n minus 1 plus d, that some term is equal to its previous term with d added to it. So how can we turn this formula into something for the general term? How can we get a general term formula out of this? Remember, a recursive relation needs an initial term. We have to have some starting place, right? There's nothing before our starting place to refer back to, so we actually have to be given the initial term directly. Now, we don't know its value yet, so we'll just call it a1. We'll call it the first term. We'll leave it as that. Now, from a n equals a n minus 1 plus d, we see that a1 relates to later terms. At the most basic level, we have that a2 is equal to a1 plus d, right? The second term is equal to the first term, adding d onto it. That's what it means for it to be an arithmetic sequence. We can take this out and continue looking at later terms. So a3 would be equal to a2 plus d, based on this recurrence relation. But we just figured out that a2 is equal to a1 plus d, so we can swap out for a2, a1 plus d. Which now gets us a1 plus 2d when we add this d to that one there. So we've got a1 plus 2d for a3. When we work on a4, well that's a4 is going to be a3 plus d, right? The previous term adding d. But once again, we just figured out a1 plus 2d is what a3 is, so we can plug in for a3. So we've got a1 plus 2d, and now we can add that d onto the 2d, so we wind up getting a1 plus 3d is what a4 is able to. So we, is what EA4 is equal to. So we notice that this pattern is going to keep going. We're just going to keep adding on more and more d's to our number. So a1 equals a1. a2 equals a1 plus d. a3 equals a1 plus 2d. a4 equals a1 plus 3d, and this pattern will continue down. So we see that the nth term is n minus 1 steps from a1, right? The first term is at 1, and the nth term is at n, so to get from the first term to the n term, we have to go forward n minus 1 steps. So since it's n minus steps away from a1, we will have added d for each of those steps. So we'll have added d that many times, or n minus 1 times d. That means that the a nth term is equal to a1 plus all of those steps times d. So the nth term, a n, equals a1, our first term, plus n minus 1 times d. Thus, to find the formula 
for the general term of an arithmetic sequence, we only need to figure out the first term, a1, and the common difference, d. With those two pieces of information, we automatically have the general term. We automatically have that nth term formula. Pretty great. How about if we want an arithmetic series formula? Consider if we were told to add up all the integers from 1 to 100. How could we find 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 98 plus 99 plus 100, right? How could we add that whole thing up? Well, we could do it. We could do it by brute force where we would just sit down with a piece of paper or a calculator and just punch the whole thing out, right? We could do it by hand, but that's going to take a long time. And anytime we wind up seeing something that's going to take us forever to do, we want to ask ourselves, is there a way to be clever? Is there an easier way that I can do this that will be able to take away some of the time or take away a lot of the time and effort? So how are we going to do that? We want to look for some sort of pattern we can exploit. We want to find a pattern that we can exploit, something that will keep happening, something that we can rely on that will keep us from having to add up all these numbers because we can instead use this pattern to give us a deeper insight to what's going on. So if we look at this for a while, we might start to realize, well, there isn't a, there's a pattern in the numbers, but that doesn't help us because that's just adding the numbers. But is there a way that the addition itself has a pattern? Is there something we could match up, something that we could create? And this is where we're getting really clever. So this is the hard part where you really have to sit down and think about it for a long time. And hopefully you just wind up getting some lightning bolt of insight. And hopefully at some point we'll notice, hey, here's 100, here's 1. If we add them together, we get 101. But not only that, if we add 99, let's use a new color. If we use 99 and 2 hey, we get 101. Hey, if we had 98 and 3, we get 101. If we keep doing this in, if we keep working our way in, we're going to keep adding things up to 101, 101, 101. So if we notice that we can add 1 in 100 to get 101, 2 in 99 to get 101, 3 in 98, we get 101, and so on and so on and so on. So what we can do is we can pair up each number from 1 to 50 with a number from 51 to 100, and we will always be able to make 101 out of it, right? We work, start out at the extremes, 1 and 100, right? We start at these two extremes, 1 and 100, and we work in 2 and 99, 3 and 98, 4 and 97, until we finally make our way to 50 and 51. So we were able to figure out this pattern. There's something going on. Now we're cooking. Now we have something that we can pull ourselves to a formula that will make this really easy. With this realization in mind, let's look for an easy way to pair up the number. So first thing, it's nice to give names to things in algebra. It lets us work with them more easily. So let us have s denote the sum of 1 to 100. So s is equal to 1 plus 2 plus blah, 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 plus 99 plus 100. It's so all those numbers added up together. Now notice, we can rewrite the order of those numbers since order of addition doesn't matter, right? 1 plus 2 plus blah, 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 plus 99 plus 100 here is the same thing as 100 plus 99 plus blah, 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 plus 2 plus 1, right? We can swap the order and we still have the same value in the end. That's one of the nice things about the real numbers. Order of addition doesn't matter. Furthermore, we can add two equations together. That's elimination. Remember when we worked on systems of linear equations? If you've got an equation, you can just add it to another equation because they're both working equations. You can add the left sides and the right sides and you know everything works out. There's nothing wrong with doing that. So what we've got is we can add the top equation there and the bottom equation. The normal order and the reversed order, we can add them together. What do we wind up getting? Well, here we've got 101, so we get 101. Here we've got 99 and 2, so we get 101. Here we got 2 and 99, so we get 101. Here we have 1 and 100, so we get 101. And we know that we're going to end up having 101 show up for every one of the values inside of here as well. How many terms are there total? Well, we had 1, 2, 3, blah, 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 99, 100. So we had 100 terms left to right, right? 100 terms left to right. So if we had that many terms total, well, even after we add them up and each one of them becomes 101, then we've got 100 terms total. So we've got 100 terms on the right side. So if we've got the same number appearing 100 times, well, we can just condense that with multiplication, right? We can condense all that addition with multiplication. 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 times 4, 4 times 3. So if we've got 101 appearing 100 times, then we can turn that into 100 times 101. Our left side is still just 2s, so we've got 2s equals 100 times 101. What we're looking for is the sum, s equals 1 plus blah 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 up until 100. So we just divide both sides by 2 to get rid of this 2 here. Divide both sides by 2, 100 divided by 2 gets us 50. So 50 times 101, which means we've got an answer of 5,050, right? So 
that probably took about as much time as if we added up 1 plus 2 all the way up to 100. If we'd done that whole thing by hand, it would have taken a while. And now we've got the beginning kernel to go, hey, we could just do this for anything at all, and it would wind up working out. Indeed, that's what we'll work at. So we've got this method in mind of being able to string all the, all the things in our arithmetic sequence together and then flip it and add them together and see what happens. So we can now figure out a general formula for any finite arithmetic series. Let Sn denote the nth partial sum, that is the first n terms of the sequence added together of some arithmetic sequence. So Sn equals a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus blah 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 up until we get to plus a n minus 1 up until finally a n is our end because we have the nth partial sum. Great. Earlier, we figured out the general term for any arithmetic sequence is a n equals a 1 plus quantity n minus 1 times d. So we can swap out a 1 for what it is in the general form, a 2 for what it is in the general term, a n minus 1 for what it is in the general term, a n for what it is in the general term. This will get everything in terms of a 1 and d and that n. Great. Thus, we can write out Sn if we want to. We can write it out as Sn equals A1, right? And then A2 would be A1 plus D. 2 minus 1, so 1 times D, A1 plus D. We work our way out. A n minus 1 would be A1 plus n minus 2 D, right? We plug in n minus 1 for the general n term, so n minus 1 minus 1, n minus 2 times D. And finally, the A n would be A1 plus n minus 1 times D. Great. So we've got this thing where only thing showing up there is A1, N, and D. We've got way less things that we have to worry about getting in our way. Furthermore, we can write Sn in the opposite order. We're allowed to flip addition order. So we write it in the opposite order as Sn equals last thing now goes first, A1 plus N minus 1 D. A1 plus N minus 2 D goes next. And then finally we work our way down A1 plus D. A1. So now we have the equation in its normal order and the equation in its opposite order. We can add these two equations for Sn together, right? They're both equal. They're both fine equations. There's nothing wrong with them, so we're allowed to use elimination to be able to add equations together. We add them together and we have our normal way of writing it. Sn equals A1 plus blah 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 plus up until our anth term A1 plus quantity n minus 1 times d. And then the opposite order, Sn equals A1 plus n minus 1 d plus blah 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 up until A1. We add these together, a1 plus a1 plus n minus 1d, that winds up getting us 2a1 plus n minus 1d. Over on the far end, we'll wind up having the exact same thing, a1 plus n minus 1d plus a1 will get us 2a1 plus n minus 1d, and we're going to wind up getting the same thing for every term in the middle as well. All of those dots will wind up matching up as well for the same reason that we added 1 in 100, then 2 in 91, then 3 in uh, 98. They all wound up matching up together. Same thing happens. We'll always wind up having that be the value for each of the additions through our elimination. So notice at this point we can do the following. We can write this 2a1 plus n minus 1d. We can write it here, 2a1 plus n minus 1d. Well, that's the same thing. We can split the 2a minus 2a1 into two different parts. So we've got a1 plus, and then we can just put parentheses, a1 plus n minus 1d. Well, we already have a way of writing this out. a1 plus n minus 1d, well, that's the a nth term. So what we've got is a1 plus a n. So we can write this as a1 plus a n. We swap each one of them out. We now have 2Sn is equal to A1 plus An plus blah, 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 plus A1 plus An. How many terms are there total? There are n terms here total because we started at A1 here and we worked our way up until we finally got to An here. So first term, second term, third term, blah, 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 up until the nth term. So first term to the nth term, then that means we've got a total of n terms. So A1 plus An gets added to itself n times n terms, so n times since they're all identical. So at that point, we've got 2Sn equals n times a1 plus a n. And since what we wanted on its own was just Sn, we divide 2Sn by 2 on both sides of our equation, and we get n over 2 times a1 plus a n. Great. Thus, we now have a formula for the value of any finite arithmetic series. Given any arithmetic sequence, a1, a2, a3, blah, 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 the sum of the first n terms is n over 2 times a1 plus a n. n over 2 times a1 plus a n. This works for any finite arithmetic sequence, starting at the first term, working up to the nth term. So we can find the sum by only knowing the first term 
a1, the last term, a n, the total number of terms n. So first term a1, last term a n, total number of terms n. That's all we need, and we can just easily, just like that, find out what the value of a finite arithmetic series is. Pretty great. Before we go on, though, one little thing to be careful about. Be careful to pay attention to how many terms are in the series. It can be easy to get the value of n confused and accidentally think it's one higher or one lower than it really is. We'll see why that's the case in the example, so just pay really close attention. If you're working from a1 up until a n, then that's easy because it's 1, 2, 3, 4, blah, 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 up until the n, so it must be that there are n things there. But it can start getting a little bit more confusing if you start at a number that isn't 1. If you start at 5 and count your way up to 26, seven, how many things are did you just say out loud? We'll see what we're talking about there as we work through the examples. All right, let's see some examples. Show that the sequence below is arithmetic, then give a formula for the general term a n. So first, to show that it's arithmetic, we need to show that it has a constant difference. So to get from 2.6 to 3.3, we add 0.7. To get from 3.3 to 4, we add 0.7. To get from 4 to 4.7, we add 0 0.7, and we can see that this is going to keep going like this. So it checks out. It is an arithmetic sequence because there's a common difference. Its common difference is 0 0.7. To figure out the general term a n, we want to figure out what is our a1. a1 is just the first term, which is 2.6. So our general term a n always winds up working like this, is the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference. So now we can just plug in our values. A n equals, we figured A1 is 2.6, plus n minus 1, that's just going in because it's the general term, times our difference of 0 0.7. There we are. There is our general term. There is the formula for the nth term. Alternatively, if we wanted to, we could also simplify this a little bit more so it isn't n minus 1. That part doesn't show up. Sometimes it's useful to have it in this format, but other times we might want to simplify it. So if we decided to simplify it, we'd have a n equals 2.6 plus n times 0 0.7, so 0 0.7 n minus 1 times 0 0.7, so minus 0 0.7. So the 2.6 and the minus 0 0.7, they interact, and we have 1.9 plus 0 0.7n. So alternatively, we could write it like this. Either of these two ways is perfectly valid. Either one of these two things is a formula for the general term. Sometimes it'll be more useful to write it one way. Sometimes it'll be more useful to write it the other way. So don't be freaked out if you see one written in a different way than the other one. They're both, they're both totally acceptable. Second example, find the value of the arithmetic series below. So what is our difference? That will help us understand what's working on here. The difference won't actually be necessary to use our formula for an arithmetic series, but it will help us see what's going on just a little bit on our way to using it. So we've got a difference of 5 each time, so it's plus 5, plus 5, plus 5. So difference equals 5. So we need three things to know what, our, um, what the series value is. So we need to know the first term. That's easy. We can see it right there. a1 equals 7. We need to know the last term. That's easy as well. a n equals 107. And we need to know what the number of terms is. n equals question mark. So how can we figure out how many terms there are? So we might be tempted to do the following. 107 minus 7. Okay, that comes out to be... 100. And then we go, oh, hey, our difference is 5, so let's divide by 5, and so we get 20. Ah, so n must be 20. No, not the case. Now, to understand why this is not the case, we need to look at something. So let's create a little sidebar here to understand what's going on a little better. So look at if we wanted to talk about the number from 1 to 25, if we wanted to count how many numbers there are between 1 and 25, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, 25. Pretty obvious, right? That means the number of numbers, so the number is 25. There are 25 things there. Great, that makes sense. What if we were talking about going from 25 to 50? Well, we might go, okay, well, that we can count by hand, but okay, 50 minus 25. Oh, so then there are a total of 25 terms because 50 minus 25 is 25. No. Wait, what? Well, let's count it by hand. How does this work? 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. That's 26 things that we just counted out there. So what's going on? 25 
counts as something we have to count, right? When we count from 1 to 25, if we just subtracted 25 minus 1, right? If we subtracted 1 from 25, 25 minus 1, that's 24. But we don't go, oh, from 1 to 25, there must be 24 numbers because 25 minus 1 is 24. No, we don't think like that. We know counting from 1 to 25 is 25 things there. So counting from 25 to 50 means a difference of 25. That means there are 25 steps to get to 50 from 25, but we also have to count the first location that we started on. We have to actually count the 25 as well, so that's a total of 26. So what we've got is we've got 50 minus 25 equals 25, but then we have to have 25 plus 1 equals 26. So our number is 24 six for how many things that we wound up doing. So it's the same thing with seven to 107. How many steps, if we've got a distance of five for each step, how many steps do we have to take from the seven? Well, we have to take 20 steps because 20 times five is 100. So if we take 25 distant steps from seven, we'll make it to 107. So we've got 20 steps that we take, but we also have to count the seven. So we wind up actually having n equals 21, n equals 21. And so that's our value for n. So this is why you really have to think about this stuff carefully. It's really easy to just go, okay, I took that many steps, so that must be my value. No, you have to, be you have to really pay attention to make sure you're counting also where you started. But sometimes you have to pay attention and think about, did I already count where I started? So you really have to be careful with this sort of stuff. It's easy as long as you can get a1, a n, and the number of steps n but sometimes it's hard to really realize just how many steps you've had precisely, so be careful with that sort of stuff. All right, at this point, we're ready to use our formula, so n over two times a1 plus a n is the value of the sum of all of those numbers, the sum of that finite arithmetic series. So our n was 22 over two, our a1 was seven, our a n was 107, so plus 107, so we get 21 over two, times 114, we punch that into a calculator and we wind up getting 1,197. 1,197 is our answer for adding that all up. All right, third example. So here's my thing that I said at the beginning when we talked through the introduction. At, the, at this point, we are now able to add the numbers from one to 1,000 in less time than it takes to put on a pair of shoes and tie them up. So if you're going to take off your shoes and test if that is really the case, now is the time to do it before we start looking at this problem. So are you ready? Okay, let me read the problem and then we'll have things be a fair, fair challenge between shoe putting on and massive addition. Add all the integers from 1 to 1,000. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 blah 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 plus 999 plus 1,000. All right, you ready? Ready, set, shoes on now. Okay, so first term is equal to 1. Our last term is equal to 1,000. The total number of terms we have from 1 to 1,000 is simply 1,000. So it's 1,000. Number of terms divided by 2 times the first term plus the last term, 1,000. So 500 times 1,000 and 1 is equal to 500,500. Bing, 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 done. Pretty amazing how fast we can wind up adding everything from one to 1,000 in that little time, right? This is the power of the this, this series formula. This is the power of studying series, is the fact that we can add things that would take so long to work out by hand like that, right? We can do this stuff really, really quickly once we work through this. Our first term was one, our last term was 1,000, so A1 equals one, a n equals 1,000. How many things are there from 1 up to 1,000? Well, that one's pretty easy. That one's 1,000. So we've got n over 2, 1,000 over 2, times 1 plus 1,000. So 500 times, oh, yeah, 500 times, actually I made a little bit of a typo as we were writing that out, 500 times 1,001. So multiply that out and you get 500,500. Simple as that. Fourth example, find the value of the sum below. So to do this, Let's write out what this series, what this sigma notation winds up giving us. So i equals 4 is our first place. So that's going to be 53 minus, oh, that should be, if it's going to be an i here and a k here, they have to agree on that. So that should actually read as a k or the thing on the inside should read as a i for this problem. Sorry about that. 53 minus 4 times 4 is our first one plus 53 minus 4 times 5, our next step up, right, our index goes up by 1, plus 
53 minus 4 times 6. Our index goes up one again, and it keeps doing this until we get to our last upper limit for our sum. So 53 minus 4 times 25. Cool. Now, at this point, we think, OK, how can we add this up? Well, oh, hey, great. We've got, right, this is an arithmetic sequence. It's four times some steadily increasing one by one thing. So it's an arithmetic sequence, arithmetic series that we're appearing, that's appearing here. So if that's the case, what do we need? We need to know the first term, the last term, and the number of terms that occur in between, the number of terms there are total. So if that's the case, all we really care about is this first term and this last term. All the stuff in the middle, don't really need to work with it. 53 minus 4 times 4, so 53 minus 16, plus blah, 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 up until our last term of 53 minus 4 times 25, 100. 53 minus 16 comes out to be 37, plus blah, 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 plus 53 minus 100 comes out to be negative 47. So our first term is 37. Our last term is negative 47. The only real question that we have now is, what is the value for n? How many terms are there total? So we're counting from 4 up to 25. So from 4 up to 25, how many steps do we have to take there? 25 minus 4 means 21 steps. But notice, it's steps. So 21 steps, but we also have to count the k equals 4, right? It's 21 steps above 4, so we also have to count the step at there. So 21 plus 1 to count where we start, right? It's not just the, how many steps you've taken forward, but how many stones there are total, so to speak. 21 plus 1 equals 22 for our value of n. So we get n equals 22. Great. So n equals 22. We know what the first one is. We know what the last one is. We're ready to work this out. So 22 is our n divided by 2, n over 2 times the first term, 37, plus the last term, negative 47. We work this out. 22 over 2 is 11 times 37 plus negative 47 is negative 10. We get negative 110 is what that whole series winds up working out to be. Cool. All right, and we're ready for our fifth and final example. An amphitheater has 24 seats in the third row, 26 in the fourth. If this pattern of seat increase between rows is the same for any two consecutive rows, and there are 27 rows total, how many seats are there in total? So the first thing we want to do is understand how is this working? Well, it's an amphitheater, right? So we can see this picture here to help illustrate what's going on. So as we get farther and farther from the stage, it curves out more and more, right? So it's pretty small near the stage, but as it gets farther and farther, it expands out and out. So that means there's more seats in every row the farther, the farther back a row we go. So later rows will wind up having more seats than early rows. That's why we've got 24 in the third, but 26 in the fourth. Right? We can see this. The early rows have fewer seats than the later rows from how far they are from the stage. Okay. So what we're looking for is how many seats there are total. So how many seats total? So what we can do is we can talk about the third row has 24 seats. The fourth row has 26 seats. So we could think of this as a sequence, right? We know that it has the constant increase. The pattern of seat increase between rows is always the same. So what we've got here is an arithmetic sequence. Makes sense since that's what the lesson is about. So we can write 24 seats in the third row. We could write that as a 3 equals 24. We also know that it's 26 in the fourth row. So a6, whoops, a6, a4 equals 26. Okay, so if that's the case, the pattern of seat increase is the same. So the pattern of seat increase is always the same for two consecutive rows. So that means to get from 24 to 26, we added plus 2, right? We have a common difference of positive 2. So if that's the case, what would the second row have to be? Well, it would have to be minus 2 from the third row, so it would be at 22, right? 22 plus 2 gets us to 24. Same logic for the first row, so the first row must be at 20. 20, 22, 24, 26, so that's the number of seats. So we see we've got a nice arithmetic sequence here. What we're really looking to do is to take a finite arithmetic series. We are looking to figure out what is the 27th partial sum, because what we want to do is add the number of seats in the first, second, third, fourth, blah, 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 up until the 27th row, and we'll be able to figure out all of those. So what we need to use the formula we figured out is we need to know how many seats there are in the first row, how many seats there are in the last row, and the total number of rows. So how many seats are there in the last row? 
So A27 is going to be our last row because there are 27 rows total. So A27 is going to be the number in the first row plus 27 minus 1, right? N minus 1, 27 minus 1 times our difference. Our difference is 2, so times 2. This makes sense because what we've got here is the 27th row is going to be equal to our first row, 20, plus how many steps is it to get from the first to the 27th row? That's going to be 26 steps times an increase of 2 for every row we go forward. We work this out, so that means our 27th row is equal to 20 plus 26 times 2 is 52. A27, our 27th row, the number of seats in our 27th row, 20 plus 52, is 72 seats total. So at this point, we've got 72 seats for our final row, 20 seats for our first row. How many total rows are there? Well, that's going to be, if we're going from the first row up into the 27th row, then we can just count 1, 2, 3, 4, counting up to 27. That's easy. That's 27, right? So n equals 27. So our formula is the number of the number of terms total divided by 2 times the first term plus the last term. So our number of terms total, number of rows total, 27 divided by 2 times how, what is their first term? What is the first number of seats? 20 plus what is the last number of seats? Our last term, 72. 27 over 2 times 92. We work that out with a calculator and we wind up getting 1,242 seats total in the amphitheater. Great, there we are with the answer. All right, in the next lesson, we'll wind up looking at geometric sequence and series, which gives us the way to look at this through multiplying instead of just adding. All right, we'll see you at educator.com later. Bye.